but it is because of the increase in communication and how people all over Europe can begin to have conferences and discussions and write for magazines and newspapers that each other reads and have all sorts of attempts at trying to apply rationality and logic to the idea of government. Because most of the governments in a place like Europe at this time period are things that have existed in one form or another for centuries. You know, someone in the distant past was a great military leader who establishes a dynasty who rules for hundreds of years and no one ever really asks whether or not that's the right thing to do or whether or not it's smart or anything else. In the 1800s, people began to think, along with you know, changes in science and all kinds of different things, that maybe people could come up with smarter approaches. But there was wide disagreement, though, on what that smart approach might be, and some of the great figures of the 1800s who played roles in this would become extremely important figures in the 1900s. In fact, someone who was involved in trying to come up with a system that seemed to be an improvement over what Europe was living with in the 1800s explodes in importance in 1917, exactly where we are in this First World War story. He was renowned in his own day, within his own circles, but he certainly wasn't a household name, he becomes a historical superstar in 1917. And there's a little bit of irony to that, because in 1917, this figure's been dead 34 or 35 years. One of the best, or one of the worst, aspects of an idea, depending on what you consider good or dangerous, is the fact that it doesn't die with the originator. 1917, all of a sudden, he starts hearing the name Karl Marx. Marx is often credited with being the originator of modern communism or Marxism, but I think that's probably giving him a little too much credit. After all, very few people come up with ideas out of nowhere, and Marx, like most people, stood on the shoulders of giants with his ideas. He was reading guys like the German philosopher Hegel and a lot of other people. But if a guy like Hegel's an example of the intellectual contagion, then Marx is an example of someone who mutated it further. And of course, perhaps the ironic tragedy of Marx is that Marx didn't get to be the implementer of his ideas. His ideas were adapted and morphed into different forms. Like many figures from history, if you could go back and show Karl Marx, how he's treated in the history books and the things he's associated with, I think he might jump off a bridge. There's a lot of figures like that who are remembered for things that are almost 180 degrees different than what they devoted their lives to working for. Marx thought he was doing good, and yet today we think about his role in the deaths of tens of millions of people and the creation of some of the worst slave states in all human history. If you read Marx and find out what he was all about, that's exactly what he was hoping to prevent and stop and eliminate. If you could bring Karl Marx back from the dead and have him analyze where things went wrong, I wouldn't be surprised at all if he blamed a botched implementation for the way things turned out. We might argue that Marx's ideas from the get-go were poor, but I think he would probably say that he never got a chance.